Greetings printing enthusiasts, my name is Vicki Soma, this is Teagall 3D, and today's episode, we're going to talk about embedding mirrors into your prints. As a little bit of a backstory, February is my sister's 40th birthday, and I've never, ever, ever printed anything for her. I've printed stuff for her husband, but not for her, and that had to change. When you go into my sister and her husband's house, they're very into visually stimulating things. There's a lot of play on light and color. They have lasers that are making patterns on the walls and ceilings. They have lights that are changing color. They have lava lamps. They have black lights. And when I was trying to think of a design for my sister, I wanted something that was definitely going to play with the lighting, the variety of lighting that is in their room. One thing that plays with light really well is mirrors. But to my knowledge, there are no mirror filaments out on the market yet. And that's where we tie into embedding mirrors that we purchase elsewhere. In this case, I happened to be in our local craft store, Michael's, and I ran across little square mosaic mirrors, and I knew immediately that these were going to be just an uh, uh, absolute complement to my design. All right, the design itself was done in Blender, and that I don't want to go into detail on because it is an entire episode in itself. But the basic concept here is when I was doing the modeling, I left little cavities in the model itself for the placement of the mirrors. Cliff Notes version. Uh, for clearances, I used a half a millimeter. So the mirror itself is 15 millimeters long and high, and the cavity would be 16 millimeters long and high. So I have a little bit of a buffer zone there when I'm putting the mirrors in. As an overview of our process, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up Simplify 3D. Actually, it prints upside down. We're gonna set up Simplify 3D and tell my printer to go forth and print up to almost to the end of the print, and then it's gonna pause and lower the bed down just 100 millimeters so I have enough room to insert my mirrors in. And then we resume the print and I'll start back up where it ended and just seal those mirrors into place. Okay, so here I am in Simplify 3D. This processes section in the lower left hand corner, this is a very, very powerful tool because it allows me to change my settings and change my preferences with how this object is going to be printed at various stages of its life cycle. Joe Telling, the 3D printing nerd, has illustrated how multiple processes can be used to change your infill percentage. So you can actually have part of your model be denser than the rest of it. I also use multiple processes a lot for filament color changes. So I can make multicolored birds on my single extruder machine. Another thing Simplify 3D can do is you can change your instruction when it first starts your print and when it ends your print. So let's talk about your printer here. When your printer first starts up a print, it's usually running through some startup procedures before it actually starts making your model. An example is it's turning on your extruder. It's homing your axis so your nozzle knows where its orientation is. It may be running the nozzle off the side of your bed and oozing some filament so you um, make sure you got a nice good flow before it actually gets to your model. And then typically when your printer finishes your print, it's turning off the extruders it's so everything can cool down. It's dropping your bed, sometimes making a nice little dramatic noise, <laughs> announcing print is done, print is done. So digging into this first process here, let's go over into the script section. This is where we can define what the printer is going to do at the beginning and what the printer is going to do at the end of this process. The starting script may look intimidating to you right now, this is all stock default information. This came with my installation of Simplify 3D and was set up when I told it that I had a Maker Gear M2. And this is where it's doing that stuff where it's turning on the extruder and homing the access and running my nozzle off the bed so it can ooze some filament before it gets to my model. The ending script is where I made some customizations. 
Here, instead of all the fancy stuff of turning off the nozzle and lowering the print bed, uh, I've gone ahead and the first thing I do is set it in relative mode. So any further instruction, it, the nozzle is using its current position as its orientation, like where I'm gonna go from here. And then I simply tell it, hey dude, move up 100 millimeters. This is key here. First off, Moving the nozzle up 100 millimeters gives me enough working room so I can put the mirrors in without burning myself. Secondly, and more importantly, is when your nozzle, when you pause a print and your nozzle is sitting on that print, the nozzle's hot, the plastic melts. That's why 3D printing works. So the nozzle is melting your plastic and it may be oozing some extra filament out too. So it's making defects and blobs and imperfections. My mirror clearances are just a half a millimeter on either side. A little blob, a little zit, that can make it so I can't slide that mirror in. So having the nozzle lift up immediately when it gets to the right section of the print, that's key to my success. And then going over and looking at my second process, if you go under scripts, the starting script is now what is customized. And there I'm simply changing it back over to absolute mode. So when the nozzle, the printer gets instructions that say specifically to go to 17.1 millimeters of height, it'll go specifically to 17.1 millimeters of height. And then the ending script, this is all stock script that came with my Simplify 3D when I told it it was a Maker Gear M2. So this is where it turns off my extruder and this is where it drops my bed dramatically to say that the print is done. Okay, so it's finishing up the final layer of the first process. I'm going to go ahead and throw my hands here because they'll be like a, look mom, no hands, or like a magician, like no strings attached. Um, so what's going to happen is when Simplify 3D finishes this process, it's going to run my custom ending script and just drop the bed 100 millimeters so I can put my mirrors in. There we go. No hands. And I just come in and I whoop. 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 Okay. At this point, I do use my hands and I come over to Simplify 3D and I start my next process. And the very beginning of this process is go to absolute mode and then I'll move the nozzle into the proper position to start filling in. So when it finishes the second process, it's gonna go ahead and run that script where it turns off. So it's gonna drop the whole bed down. It's gonna turn off the extruder. Everything's gonna start cooling down. The end. Well, that's today's episode. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. I hope this gives you some ideas of your own of embedding mirrors or something else into your designs. If you have any questions, or any comments or any kind of tips and tricks, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm at TJW on Twitter. You can comment down below here on YouTube. I will also have an accompanying blog post going into detail my slicer settings and you can comment there as well. Thank you and have a great day.